Welcome back. This is a pause here on Joy News. Now, let's do some politics now. Three sitting my majority MPP, uh, MPs and one NDC MP are at risk of losing their seats with barely two months until the expiration of the eighth parliament. Now, former minority leader Haruna Idrisu has signaled that his side will trigger the appropriate constitutional standing order provision to declare seats of these four MPs vacant, with parliament currently constitutes 138 and 137 for NDs, for the MPP and the NDC MPs. This will mean the NDC will become the majority should they succeed in this effort. Listen to Raoul Idrisu uh, make the point at a campaign rally. On Tuesday, the Parliament of Ghana will reconvene. And when it reconvenes, I am very certain that Parliament and Ghana will go through a major constitutional test. And that constitutional test is that the NDC minority must become the majority from Wednesday next week. I assume, and this must happen if there is constitutional and legal proprietary in Ghana. Any nuanced interpretation of Article 97 provides that if a member of parliament on a political party ticket like MPP defects and fails to be independent, that MP ceases to be member of parliament. And if an independent member of parliament, by virtue of the provision of Article the seven sub clause G, an independent joins a political party, that independent loses constitutional recognition and does not belong to parliament. And even if an NDC candidate, MP, defects to become an independent, he ceases to be a member of parliament. Therefore, we will invoke the speaker's proper and true interpretation of Article 97 by our standing order. So let's get to understand this matter most forcefully. Now, Parliamentary Affairs Correspondent Koku Asante joins me in the studio with more. So Koku, share with us the procedure for such an exercise. Well, so ordinarily, um, if the precedent that has been laid, the precedent laid in 2020 is anything to go by, the political parties would usually communicate to parliament that this member of parliament who came here on our ticket has since decided that he's going to go independent, for which reason we have expelled him from our political party and so on the strength of Article 97 of the Constitution mm. must lose his seat. It appears the NDP may not be willing to do so. It is obvious that three of their own colleagues are going independent. But it may be obvious that they are not going to do so because it will affect their numbers. And that is why the NDC is saying that they are going to do so. And given that this is a constitutional matter and also a standing orders matter, any member of parliament for that matter can rise on the floor and raise a matter either by motion or whatever procedure that person may adopt and communicate to the speaker that these persons are flouting the specifics of this constitutional provision mm. for which reason he or she believes that these persons should not continue to hold on to their seat. So what we expect tomorrow, Harun Idris, who was the minority leader, or any other person so appointed to do so, will do, is that a motion of assault will be moved on the floor, specifically calling the name of these persons with evidence that they have successfully filed with the Electoral Commission to either contest as independent candidates or either the independent candidate who is now contesting as a member on the NDP side, for which reason they will invite the Speaker of Parliament, Aban Bagwin, mm. to make a ruling. If the Speaker of Parliament makes a favorable ruling, then that will mean the Speaker of Parliament will consequently declare these four seats as vacant because of the specifics. And the names of these persons, right. Peter Yaokwachiaka, he's currently the NDC MP for Memphis Central. He lost in his bid to return to Parliament in the NDC primaries. He lost to Madame Joanna Kujo. And in fact, that election was challenged in court. Mm. And given that the, the, the time for the race for, 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 for the Electoral Commission to get the nomination was closed. The NDC decided to annul the election and rerun it again. They did it again, and he lost to Madame Joanna Kujo, for which reason we understand he's peeved and going for independent. Then there is a second deputy speaker, Andrew Amakwensiyama, 
who in 2020 was a sitting MPP MP, lost his parliamentary primaries as well and decided to go independent, for which reason he was expelled at the time. This time around, he is back in the fold of the new patriotic party and he's being allowed to contest on the ticket of the NPP. So he's, he's no longer going to be an independent party, independent MP, should he win the election mm. and will join the NPP fold. Then there is Cynthia Morrison, MP for Aguna West, mm. who is also a former gender minister, currently sitting MP for the NPP, who also, just like all the other persons, lost her parliamentary primaries, peeved about a few issues, and for instance, I decided to go on for independent. There are issues with her candidate, right. of course, as it, we speak. There's part of it in court. Yes, a court has ordered that she cannot hold herself out as a parliamentary candidate because the claim of the person who went to court was that he did not, he actually does not, uh, she does not she does come from that constituency. Yes. And so that issue is still pending and she's taking the matter on. And then there is the MP for Sum, Kojo Asante, who also lost the parliamentary primaries and has decided to go independent. And so all these four persons, if these processes are triggered in the House, their seats may be declared vacant by the Speaker of Parliament and they will lose it. Final question before I bring in Justice Abdullah, a constitutional lawyer. I remember that before the 2020 elections, when the, the current uh, Deputy Speaker of Parliament signaled his intention to go independent, the MPP reported the matter to the Speaker then, uh, Aaron Michael Quay, yes. and then the seat was declared vacant. But it was declared vacant at the time that the party was, we were just heading towards the election. election. You say that there's been a precedent. Yes, so that, that precedent has been there, only that this time around, this is much more, it's almost like um, two months to the entire eight parliament being dissolved. Mm -hmm. And when parliament resumes tomorrow, they are not going to sit for a long time. They are going to do about three to four weeks, and then MPs will be allowed to go and campaign for them to return. This is specifically what um, the, 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 the then um, speaker, Aaron Michael Quay, said in the, on the floor. He said, having forfeited the membership of the party on whose ticket he was elected to parliament, the operative language of the constitution is that he shall shall, which is mandatory, vacate his seat in parliament. And then, consequent on this, um, he declared a seat vacant. And so that precedent has been set in 2020. That is what the NDC is seeking to build on, mm. so that for the first time in this country's history, we can have a majority, a majority caucus that has not belonged to the same political party that is controlling the executive. Let me bring in Justice Abdullah, a constitutional lawyer and, you know, a lecturer as well. So, Justice Abdullah, I mean, clearly, there's precedent. You would say that Haruna himself, a constitutional lawyer, has a case. See that there are precedents, not precedents. Right. There are several. Um, and we've had several in the in the past. Um, from Har um, was it Hawa Yakubu Ogede? Exactly. And uh, of others in the past. I can, all I, the I, I, can, the, I can also remember Doctor Dr. Oyosini. In his case, he did the cross. Thank you. He, he did the, the, the cross you. carpeting on the floor, and after that, the seat was declared vacant. Absolutely. In fact, I think um, the, our former um, ambassador to Saudi Arabia, um, um, the one who just passed, um, also was I mean cross carpet. Right. Um, yeah. Yes. I, I think he just passed um, a couple of weeks ago, mm. and so. I mean, this is not um, a new territory. Um, we've we've um, been here before severally. And so there's nothing new, really, um, um, that is extraordinary under this circumstance. Um, we, the only thing that is so new are the numbers. This is the first time we have such huge numbers. Um, for me, it sounds so little, but in our parliament, that's so huge, um, considering the circumstances of this particular issue. And um, so, and also, this is also the very first time that this issue has become of much interest to the rest of us and people are now asking several legitimate questions and and i indeed i, I agree with a lot of the questions that are coming up um, um now the questions are, are um, flying all over as to whether um, future intentions could be a basis for 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 a person to be for a seat to be declared vacant right and my answer to that question is very simple that these are not future events the event themselves may be future but they, um, the things leading to those future events are the basis, are what are being questioned at this moment. Crossing carpet, um, in fact, contesting on the ticket of a political party does not start only when you win the seat. Mm. It starts from the moment you were nominated. And before you could be nominated, knowing 
the political terrain of this country and the party politics, you must be a member of the political party in question for a period of time right. before you can be allowed to contest election. Now, if you are a member of the NDC and, for instance, you decide to join, you decide to contest on the ticket of the MPP, you must be a member of the ticket, a, mm. a member of the NDC, before you can be allowed to even go for the primaries. What it means is that these persons who are being, who seats are being called into question, mm. join these other political parties, possibly way back. The, otherwise, they wouldn't have been allowed to contest on the ticket of those political parties. Right. Now brings in the issue of the in, those going independent. As for those going independent, um, it, it's easier to say that it would only start from the day they actually declared their seat or filed their nominations with the electoral commission. That is the day that you can easily say that indeed cross carpet to be independent members of parliament from their various political parties. Mm. Now, if that is the case, the issue of the future doesn't come in because it's today that you are cross carpet. Your crossing of carpet will not start only when you win the seat to come into parliament. Yes, I think uh, that argument for me doesn't um, it doesn't work at all. It doesn't work with me. And so I can understand that there may be um, multiplicities of interpretations to this, and for which reason, um, a cause for maybe the Supreme Court to step in and all of that um, um, could come in. But even then, I think that would be a premature ejaculation because once the decision is finally made by the speaker for someone else to contest. The, um, um, the, 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 that decision, right. it is very difficult for anyone to call into question the appropriateness or otherwise of the speaker's declaration, whichever way it goes. And then it's only at that point that we can invite the various other precedents that have happened um, prior to Speaker Babin um, assuming office and making his declaration for um, further discussions and indeed interpretations about the Supreme Court. Uh, Council, let me come in here. I mean, the, 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 the question has been asked is the propriety of this move. For the NDC, it plays to the advantage. Uh, perhaps the reason why the MPP is not taking steps to report their own members to the Speaker for the seats to be declared vacant is the numbers in Parliament. So clearly, they, I mean, if, if, if the MPP had more numbers, they would have taken this action as, as, as a sort of punishment for these MPs that have gone, you know, uh, you know, rogue, if you like. However, we don't, they don't have the luxury of numbers to now play the hard line. So that's how come they will keep quiet. Now, what I'm picking is that if the minority is successful with their motion, they may go to court and change the speaker's ruling. And maybe, maybe the matter will go to the Supreme Court. By that time, the life of this parliament would have even come to an end. That's correct. But that would still be a very good precedent if the, um, if the NPP indeed goes to court. Because um, whatever interpretation that would come out from the Supreme Court um, would not only be a learning curve for all of us for today, mm. but it would also help us in our future decision making. And, and I think because this is a nation building, a constitutional build up, I think it is better for us to have some of these declarations going forward so that it guides us into the future. And so this parliament may not benefit from what our opinion that is, um, a possible Supreme Court decision may bring, but future decisions of parliament um, would be very, um, um, it would be very helpful for such a, um, a future spe um, 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 speaker and indeed the whole nation to learn from whatever interpretation that would emanate eventually from the, from, the, from the Supreme Court. And I would urge anyone really mm -hmm. to pursue that, whatever decision that comes up. Whatever decision, I would urge anyone, whether MPP or NDC. But I do understand the political aspects of this whole discussion. So, I mean, when the Deputy Speaker um, crossed carpet, it took a political party to write to the Speaker then, um, um, Speaker Quay, to, to um, invoke his authority um, to remove and ex expel that, speak, um, that member of parliament from office. But today, everybody is silent about it because, right. of course, the numbers do not... Um, um, help us in doing and taking such drastic decisions. But the point is, we are here, the crossroads. We need to take this decision. It may not be too good because really we have barely three months for the present and government lesson. to be out of office. And so it may not have a significant blow to to the to the NDC, I mean, to the MPP. But of course, it gives them the, some bargain and um, bragging rights. Um, and, and, and they will probably may be able to take certain decisions, particularly when 
you have crucial decisions to be made going into um, a possible handing over or otherwise. But come what may, there will be a handing over and they would have, we would have to have a decision made as to whether um, the handing over is going to the NDC or to a future MPP government. There will still have to be some decisions that would have to be taken. And last minute decisions uh, in this country are quite dangerous. And Absolutely. So, um, beyond the bragging rights, mm -hmm. it, it is important that um, we have a finality to these whole discussions and 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 tomorrow is pregnant. So let's let's keep of our course. fingers crossed and, and hear what we'll, the government brings we'll, up. We'll, we'll wait for the wording of this motion. Thank you very much, Justice Abdullahi. Uh, Abdullah, he is a constitutional uh, lawyer and a lecturer of the UPSA. Now, we're going to talk about the environment and Galamsha shortly, but before there is a breaking story coming in, you know, early on, I spoke about uh, we waiting for an official statement from the Ghana Police Service on the accident that took place at East Legon that came the lives of two individuals. The police administration just updated their social media handles with a statement. The statement reads, the Ghana Police Service has commenced investigations into an accident that occurred on Saturday, uh, 12 October 2024 at East Legon in Accra, leading to the death of two persons. Preliminary police investigation indicates that the suspect driver, identified as Salifu Amwako, rammed the vehicle into another vehicle on, on Zani Ashi Street at East Legon. Both vehicles caught fire and bent beyond recognition. The suspect driver and other surviving victims are currently receiving medical attention. Meanwhile, one of the surviving victims has since been treated and discharged, while the bodies of the deceased victims have been deposited at the morgue for preservation and autopsy. And again, the police says that they've started their own investigation, and what they've done so far indicates that the suspect driver identified as Salifu Amwakon rammed his vehicle onto another vehicle at East Legon. Both vehicles caught fire and bent beyond recognition. We'll follow up on this matter and bring you when we have updates. But the environmental NGO, Arocha Ghana, has petitioned the U.S. government to strip Ghana of the position of co-chair of the Forest and Climate Leaders Partnership. Arocha, in a letter cited by your news, argues that even though Ghana's tenure expires next month, they are convinced the Ghana government is no longer fit to co-chair the, 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 the FCLP as we move from this position with immediate effects. And there's a statement to that effect. But joining us is co uh, coordinator for eco-conscious citizens, Aula Sewa, for more on this. So Aula, why this hard stance taken by, you know, Arocha? Do you agree that, I mean, this, this is the way to go? Good afternoon. I'm not sure it's a hard stance taken by Arocha. I believe the letter speaks for itself. Would you think that uh, an, an alcoholic should be in charge of uh, an alcohol-producing company? Of course not. Just like you wouldn't think a mentally challenged person should be in charge of the asylum. This is a situation where um, Ghana is the um, co-chair of the Forest and Climate Change Partnership. Mm. And we are clearly not doing anything to preserve our forests. In fact, we passed LI-2462 which allowed mining in forest reserves, including globally significant biodiversity but areas. Now, but, so but, now, but now the process has started for, for that aspect to be revoked. And how long is that process going to take? You see, um, there's, uh, there are lawyers who are telling us that uh, it's not quite clear that the process will be completed before the, um, the end of this parliament. There are two ways you can go about it. If you're going to have the minister come to parliament and make a statement to um, parliament that they want to revoke it, then lawyers are arguing that it should be revoked immediately. But if you want to go through the process of laying it and then waiting for 21 days, right? Oh, yes, then we will not be able to resolve this matter before this parliament is dissolved. But even before that is done, the president has given clear directive to the to the, to the environmental, to the environment minister, not to implement that ally. Yes, but you see, you see, as we speak, licenses have already been granted. We have asked for all those licenses that were granted to be revoked. Mm -hmm. Forest reserves have been destroyed as a consequence of LI two four six two, which was passed in twenty twenty two. That hasn't been done, so we're not quite sure that there's any degree of seriousness. 
And the idea is to put pressure on the government to be serious about protecting our forest reserves. Mm. You see, we are not being dramatic. We face an existential threat. And when you face an existential threat, you take immediate action to stop the threat. What are we waiting for? Rising kidney disease, rising cancers, uh, rising um, birth defects, stillbirths, maternal deaths, our waters have been poisoned, our foodstuffs have been poisoned because the soil is poisoned, our forest reserves destroyed. What on earth are we waiting for? So I believe what Arocha wants to do is to pile up the pressure, hoping that when you pile up the pressure, the other demands that were made will be um, adhered to the state of emergency to allow the um, appropriate authorities to go to our forest remove reserves and remove all miners and their equipment from forest reserves and water bodies. Also, also a pause on community mining, which is necessary, which is necessary, but which hasn't been agreed to as of now. Okay. And also we need the persons named in Professor Frimpo and Boateng's report to be investigated. It's only when we show some seriousness that um, one can say that Ghana is fit to hold that position. Otherwise, one can argue that Ghana is not fit to hold the position. In fact, it brings the whole thing into disrepute, just as if you put a mentally challenged person in charge of the asylum. All right. Let's wait and hear from the U.S. government. on But I'd like to say thank you so much, Awula Sewa, for your contribution to this discussion. We'll take a short break. When we return, I'll tell you why you should look forward to the Joy Sports Invitational Tournament when we come back.